Hello and welcome to this video. I am Karnesh Jori and today I am going to talk about inter-process communication using POSIX Shared Memory Linux. There are different ways in which processes can communicate among themselves in Linux and other Unix-like systems. It turns out that shared memory is the fastest way in which processes can communicate among themselves. There are two types of shared memory in Linux, POSIX Shared Memory and System 5 Shared Memory. In this video, I will be talking about POSIX Shared Memory in Linux. So what is shared memory? Shared memory is an inter-process communication mechanism. The kernel creates a shared memory segment which is mapped to the address space of requesting processes. After this, the shared memory is just like any other part of processes address space. You can just access it like any other global data. Why is the shared memory fast? If you look at the calls of inter-process communication mechanisms like say message queues, the sender uses a send call for sending the message and the receiver uses a receive call for receiving the message. In the send call, the message is copied from the address space of sender to the kernel space. In the receive call, the message is copied from kernel space to address space of receiving process. So there are two copies, one in the send call and other in the receive call. Now look at shared memory. There is no need to send or receive data. You can make your data structure in the shared memory itself. So when a process updates the data structure, it is available immediately to other processes. So shared memory is the fastest way for communication between two or more processes on a single host. SHM open call is like the open system call for files. It opens a POSIX shared memory object and makes it available to the calling process. SHM open returns a file descriptor which a process can use in subsequent calls. The first parameter name is name of the shared memory object. The name is a null terminated string whose first character is a forward slash, then none of the subsequent character is a slash. O flag is a bit mask constructed with either ORD only or ORDWR. ORD only opens the shared memory for read only access, whereas ORDWR opens it for read and write access. Then there may be some more flags. If O create is specified, the shared memory object is created if it does not exist. A newly created shared memory object is of size 0 bytes. It can be made of desired size using the F truncate system call. If OEXCL flag is set with O create and shared memory object already exists, SHM open returns minus 1 with error number set to E exist. SHM unlink removes a previously created shared memory object from the system. The parameter name is the name of the shared memory object. We have just seen two system calls SHM open and SHM unlink to open and remove shared memory objects. These are the only two specialized POSIX shared memory calls. There are three other system calls F truncate, M map and M unmap. These three calls provide the functionality by which we can work on shared memory objects. We look at these three calls individually. The F truncate system call is used to set the size of shared memory. When shared memory is created using SHM open, it is of length 0 bytes. Using F truncate, we can make the shared memory of desired size. The first parameter FD is the file descriptor of the shared memory. The second parameter length is the desired size of shared memory. Next, we have the MMAP system call. The MMAP system call maps a POSIX shared memory object to the virtual address space of the calling process. The first parameter ADDR is the address at which the shared memory should be mapped. In most cases, the address at which shared memory is mapped is not important and we can pass null for the address. The second parameter length is the length of the shared memory. The third parameter PROT is the memory protection for the mapping. Its value for the shared memory should be PROT underscore read or PROT underscore write. 
The value of flag should be map shared, which means that any update to the shared memory should be visible to all processes. Next, FD is the file descriptor of the shared memory obtained in an earlier SHM open call. Last parameter offset is the location of the shared memory at which the mapping starts. We use the value 0 for the offset. In case of success, mmap returns the address at which shared memory has been mapped. In case of error, map underscore failed, which is minus 1 typecast to void pointer is returned and e error number is set to the error that occurred. mUnmap deletes the mappings for the region at location pointed by ADDR and having the size given by the second argument length. The shared memory is automatically unmapped when the process terminates. However, if you close the file descriptor, the shared memory region is not unmapped. As an example, we have a client server system. The server is a system logger process which keeps on looking at a shared memory region for new messages. The client processes generate messages as they go about their business and the clients just put their messages in the shared memory region with the hope that the system logger server will pick them up and log them chronologically. This is the logger.c program, the server program and in this program we have got uh, 10 buffers for the shared memory. The log file is slash temp slash example.log. There are three semaphores, sam mutex, sam buffer count, sam spool signal. Sam mutex is the mutual exclusion semaphore for the shared memory. Sam buffer count is for the managing the buffers and sam spool signal semaphore is to signal the spooler that there is something to print, go ahead and print it. And the shared memory name is slash POSIX shared mem example. Then this is a structure of shared memory. It has got uh, 10 buffers, each of 256 characters and that then it has got buffer index and buffer print index. So that these indexes are available in the shared memory. If a process maps this shared memory, it gets the buffers and also the buffer index which tells where to put the text string. First we open the log file, then we create the semaphore. We create the mutex sem, the initial value is 0 and then we do a, we create the shared memory. Shared memory and we make the shared memory using the f truncate command to the size of structure shared memory. And we map the shared memory to our address space of logger. Now we create the other two semaphores. There is a buffer count semaphore with initial value max buffers. That means 10 buffers are available initially. And we create the spool signal sem. This is for, this is for signaling the logger that some a buffer has been put, a string has been put in the buffer. So this has initial value of 0. And now we now we do a V operation on the mutex sem to indicate that the shared memory is available for use. And this logger it uh, is it does it tries to do a P operation. This logger tries to do a P operation on spool signal sem. It's waiting for a client to put something in the buffers. So since there's nothing, it blocks here. Now, now let's look at client. The client also has all these hash defines which is log file is slash temp slash example dot log and the three semaphores and the shared memory and the structure. All these are declared here. So the client gets the semaphore mutex sem and then it gets the shared memory. These are, these are already created by the logger. So it just gets to them in the process. So it maps the shared memory to its address space and then it uh, gets the semaphore uh, IDs counting semaphore and spool signal sem. 
Now, the client tries to create a message. It asks the user to write a message on the terminal and then it gets a string from the user. The client does a P operation of buffer count semaphore to get a buffer. Once it gets a buffer, it tries to access the shared memory. It does a P operation on mutex sem. After getting the buffer, client tries to write in the buffer its PID and it tries to write uh, the timestamp and a string. It writes, for each buffer it writes, it tries, writes three things PID, timestamp and the buffer and the string. So it writes that in the buffer it has got. Now, now it uh, updates the buffer index to the next buffer and if, if it is max buffer it makes it to the first zeroth buffer. And it releases the mutex sem because it is done with a shared memory. Now it, there is a there is a string in the buffer so it signals the logger that there is something in the buffer. Now this logger's p operation now passes the block is over and then it it gets the string from the buffer print index since it's the only one using buffer print index no need for mutex sem. It gets the string and then it releases a buffer by doing a V operation on buffer count sem and it writes the string to the file. This is how the logger completes its one loop and then it goes back to blocking, does a P operation spool signal sem and it blocks again. We can compile the logger and client programs. We need to link the object code with real-time library RT and the pthread library. We can do that by using the compile time options minus LRT and minus LPthread. And finally, we can run the logger and client programs. With this, we come to the end of this video. You can get all this information at http colon double slash bit dot ly slash POSIX hyphen shared hyphen memory. Thanks very much for watching. Have a good day.